In the opening scene, we are introduced to Fang Yu, the best female MMA fighter in the state. She has only recently started taking part in official matches, but has had an unbeatable record. Her recent big win has caused a sensation in the media, making her even more popular. A flashback shows us Fang Yu, telling her wealthy businessman grandfather that she wants to be a fighter. She was always expected to help the family business growing up, hence, her grandfather was very disappointed. Then, we are introduced to Ming Tian, a young man living in Macau. He has two younger siblings, currently studying in middle school. The kids are Ming Tian's responsibility since their mother abandoned them, and their father passed away. His brother loves watching MMA fights on TV, and his favorite fighter is Fang Yu, who he refers to as the queen. To earn for his younger siblings, Ming Tian had to drop out of college and start working as a delivery guy at a local restaurant. Currently, he is trying his best to get into a college with a decent scholarship to continue his education. One day at work, he is asked to deliver food to a local martial arts teacher. The job is difficult because the place is 20 minutes away, but the receiver wants the food in less than 15. During the time of pressure, we get to see Ming Tian's great sense of direction. He has basically memorized every street and shortcut in the city, which helps him do his job efficiently. When almost at the destination, he sees a poor street vendor trying to collect fruits that have fallen from her cart. As he helps her, the cart runs down the street. This is when the MMA fighter Fang Yu appears in the scene and kicks the cart to stop it from moving further. It does more damage than good as the cart breaks and all the fruits are destroyed. When asked to apologize to the vendor, she simply hands her a bundle of money for the damage and walks away. Ming Tian huffs at the rude girl and continues his way to make the delivery. Fang Yu then goes to her former martial arts teacher and asks him for help. She is being pressured by her family to leave them and may join their business. Confused, she wants him to make the decision for her. But, the teacher refuses to do it, as the decision is hers, and hers alone, to make. Just then, Ming Tian arrives, revealing that the customer who ordered the food is also the martial arts teacher. He and Fang Yu look at each other, but do not share a word, before going their separate ways. On his way to the restaurant, Ming Tian gets an email from a college, offering to provide him a 70% scholarship. However, the college is in another state. He is confused if he should move for his education, or stay, because his siblings are already accustomed to their life in Macau. To solve the dilemma, he goes to a wisdom fountain, and asks the universe to show him the way. At the same time, Fang Yu is on the other side of the fountain, doing the same. They think for a while, and come to a decision. Fang Yu decides to go through with her fighting career, while Ming Tian plans to move to another state. Ming Tian's boss is a kind man, who helps him with the moving process, and provides him a job as a delivery guy, in the place he is moving to. He even offers Ming Tian money and resources if he needs them. In the following scene, we see Ming Tian and his siblings move into a new house. Although it is not the best neighborhood, the interior of the place is quite homely. The kids seem to love it, which ultimately makes Ming Tian happy. As the first piece of decoration, he puts a picture of him and his master on a shelf. It is revealed that he used to train in boxing with the master before his death. Following that, Ming Tian takes the kids to school, signs into his new job at a KFC, then finally goes to the college for the first time. He has been enrolled in the best sports college in the state, Zhang Zi. Before this year, the college was all girls. In fact, Ming Tian will be one of the first guys to go to Zhang Zi. However, when he walks in, he realizes he might be the only guy among hundreds of girls at the college. He starts to wonder if he misread the offer letter, because not a single man is in sight. The girls are intrigued by the only man, and it doesn't help that he is also very handsome. Suddenly, he bumps into Xiao Mi, a tomboyish student who loves to box and skate. Ming Tian mistakes her for a guy, and instantly starts chatting about how grateful he is to find another male. Instead of correcting him, Xiao Mi simply puts a tiny pink clip on her hair, and introduces herself. A shocked Ming Tian apologizes before she skates away while glaring at him. 
the president and a teacher named Mr. Wang, are worried because initially 10 men had applied to the college, but after taking a tour and seeing only girls, all of them requested a transfer. Currently, Ming Tian is the only one left. The president orders Mr. Wang to do whatever it takes to keep him content so he won't leave. They want to expand the college's horizons, and the presence of male students will take a huge part in that. Outside, the girls start going crazy because of Ming Tian. They block his way, offering help that he clearly doesn't need. One of the girls and Xiaomi get into an argument regarding who gets to take Ming Tian to the principal's office. The conflict only ends when he tricks them into looking the other way, and runs away. While he is at it, he happens to bump into Fang Yu. He instantly recognizes her as the rude girl from Macau. She accidentally cuts his hand with her bag and gives him money to apply a band-aid to it. Ming Tian is furious at her materialistic behavior. He demands an apology. But to Fang Yu, money is superior to an apology. Before leaving, Ming Tian calls her a mannerless freak, which triggers a childhood trauma in Fang Yu. A flashback shows us that Fang Yu kicked the cart that day to save a little girl crossing the road in front of them. Her intentions were pure, but it caused the street vendor to suffer a loss. In class, Ming Tian sits among several girls, and is clearly uncomfortable. The girls cannot help but stare at him, even though he doesn't fancy the attention. Meanwhile, Xiaomi and Fang Yu are training together in the college's boxing club. It is revealed that they are best friends who share a common interest in boxing. Xiaomi sees that something is bothering Fang Yu. On being asked, Fang Yu claims that the new guy's harsh comments made her rethink her behavior. In the following scene, she is at home thinking about Ming Tian yet again. A flashback shows us that when she was little, her parents refused to acknowledge that she was a girl. They always wanted a son, so when she was born, they treated her like one. She wasn't allowed to grow her hair or wear girly clothes. Her naive mind only understood that she was a girl when her younger brother was born. Only after his birth did her parents allow her to wear dresses. Overjoyed at finally being able to express herself, she went to her crush and gave him a gift. But since all her friends thought she was a boy, they called her a freak. The incident bothered her so much that she still struggles with her gender identity. Meanwhile, at Ming Tian's home, his brother wakes up in his sleep and throws punches in the air. Ming Tian laughs at his cuteness before realizing that the girl he argued with is his brother's idol. He thinks to himself that Fang Yu's eyes resemble his mother's eyes, which made him angrier than he should have been earlier that day. In college, Ming Tian is continuously bothered by the girls, so much so that he can hardly concentrate on studying. The president and Mr. Wang on the other hand, are overjoyed that he agreed to stay. But, Ming Tian is planning to transfer to another college, even though they provide less percentage of tuition scholarship. The college's diverse clubs are the distinguishing feature, unique to it. The students spend more time in the clubs, comparatively, than their studies. In the clubs, their talent and skills are polished and showcased at an international level. Some girls take boxing, some take taekwondo, some gymnastics, and so on. Fang Yu and Xiaomi are in the boxing club. The freshmen are encouraged to take a tour of all the clubs to choose one that they would like to join. During the tour, Ming Tian checks at the boxing club and finds Xiaomi and Fang Yu fighting. He is mesmerized by Fang Yu's skills that are very similar to his master's. He assumes that she must have trained with the same master, but dismisses the thought. The girls force Ming Tian to be in their clubs and even fight each other for the same reason. To get rid of them, Ming Tian disregards his interests and decides to join the swimming club, the one with the fewest members. He confidently goes to the pool and takes a dive, waiting for the instructors to arrive. But strangely enough, the pool is filled with several fish. A woman informs him that the club has been disbanded due to low enrollment and the swimming pool has been modified into an ecological pool. This is the last straw for Ming Tian. He decides to transfer to another college, even if it means paying more tuition fees. He brings his concern to Mr. Wang, who begs him to stay. 
He even takes a picture of Ming Tian to put its silhouette in front of the men's bathroom being constructed down the hall. But the honor isn't enough to make Ming Tian stay. When he repeatedly requests, Mr. Wang reveals that the transferring process is quite easy. He will have to fill out a form and post it to the college's filing box. Ming Tian does as told, but is faced with a slight problem when he goes to post the form. A group of women who claim to be the first graduates of the college stops him. They have been unofficially appointed by the president to stop Ming Tian from getting to the filing box. The trained women easily defeat him and send him back to Mr. Wang's office. The teacher refuses to let Ming Tian transfer, but offers him a more appealing deal. He promises to extend his student loan payment period to 30 years with zero interest. Ming Tian will be studying for free if he takes the deal. With his current financial condition, he doesn't want to mess such an opportunity. Still, the pressure of being the only guy, among hundreds of girls, is too much for him. He decides to consider the idea. Later, Ming Tian goes to a bathroom to change, but it turns out to be women's. He bumps into a naked Fang Yu, who kicks him to the ground. As the two argue, Xiao Mi barges in, and assumes they were doing something fishy. The two dismiss her, before Ming Tian walks away. In the following scene, we see Xiao Mi, Fang Yu, and their arrival from the Taekwondo class at an ice cream parlor, arguing about who gets the last scoop of the strawberry flavor. Meanwhile, Ming Tian is on his way to deliver food when he notices a bully dragging a kid across the street. He helps the kid run away but is in turn caught by the bullies. They take him to a field and threaten him until the girls arrive on the scene. Initially they try to solve the problem by talking, but when the bullies start getting handsy, they get into a fight. After a long and entertaining struggle, the girls and Ming Tian manage to chase them away. Ming Tian is beyond grateful to them and befriends them after the incident. Because of the girls, college life doesn't seem that bad to him. Even though he might face problems on the way, he decides to terminate his transfer and stay at Zhang Zi. The very next day, he accepts Mr. Wang's offer, much to the teacher's delight, with his new friends and added advantages. Ming Tian hopes to have a smooth college life for the next four years.